Hello everyone, welcome to Cuck Me Curbs Coding Class, the greatest YouTube channel on the face of the planet, and today I'm going to show you how to use Godot's HTTP requests. And we're going to be creating a function which functions kind of like JavaScript's fetch. So if you're familiar with that, basically you give it the URL, headers, I just left it blank, no headers. Zero means get, you can also give it HTTP client dot method underscore get if you want it to be more readable and you give it a callback and then this callback function just takes the response and puts it in the place so as you can see I'm calling the github API and I'm just grabbing the name of the author of the most recent commit to my podcast app which of course is me just to demonstrate that this works so I'm gonna hit run and it will say subscribe to cook me curb because that's me I am the most recent committer, and so if you ever commit to this repository, maybe this script will say subscribe to you. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to do that so that you can set up something like a leaderboard or something. I think a leaderboard is the best example of something that you would want to make with this, but I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's get started. So once you've got the Godot editor open here, what you're going to want to do is, I'm just using a label node, of course it's probably best if you put this function in a singleton, but for the purposes of this tutorial, it's just going to be local to this node, and we're going to give it a new script. Like I said though, this is probably a function best put in a singleton. Alright, great. And I'm going to be editing this in VS Code, rather than the built-in Godot editor, just because well, it's better. It's just better. I've got a couple of extensions. I got Godot Tools and GD Script Formatter, which are incredibly useful. Godot Tools connects to the Godot editor, so you can do debugging straight from here. Really nice stuff. Okay, so open the file. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our fetch function. And I'm just going to delete all these comments because I don't want them. I know that when you're making the script, you can tell it not to put the comments there, but I always forget. All right, so make a new function, call it fetch. Funk. Fetch, open parentheses, and then we'll do URL colon string. We're just giving it the parameters it needs. Equals, and this is to give it a default value, so that if you just run fetch on its own, it'll try and do something. And I'll just do https duckduckgo.com. You don't really need to worry. You can put whatever you want here. I'm just putting duckduckgo so that something happens and it doesn't crash the game. Headers for HTTP headers, of course. Array equals blank array, comma method equals I don't know what the type is I tried to figure it out but I couldn't so I'm just not doing that method equals HTTP client dot method underscore get for the default method of course you can make this post if you want but I don't know why you would do that and then callback if you give one thing a default value you have to give it to everything for some reason so I'm just gonna do string equals ah! doesn't have to be that many a's actually there that's good and finally if you want to give an HTTP body if you want to give your request a body if you're doing a post request you can do body equals no no and then add a colon at the end of the line of course and then first thing we're gonna do if URL is equal to null or URL is equal to open quotes close quotes this is just checking if the URL exists we're going to return null so it's not gonna do anything if the URL is blank it's not even gonna try which is what we want next bar HTTP underscore request this is going to be what we're going to be using to 
request stuff equals HTTP request dot new. And you can probably guess what this does. It makes a new HTTP request. Now we are going to add child HTTP request. And the reason we're doing this is because HTTP request is a node. And technically there is a low level HTTP API, which does not require you to add a node, but it's really low level and there's no point in using it when you can just add a node. So this is gonna add a child node, don't worry, we're gonna delete it as soon as it's done doing what it does. As soon as it's done making the request. Now, we're going to do HTTP request.connect and then we'll do request underscore completed. So as soon as it's done, you know, making the request and it's got the response comma self so we're going to connect it to this script comma callback and if you were putting this in a singleton you would probably want to give it an option for what node to connect it to so when you do the callback here you could also do like node there so that it could connect it back to itself but since this is in the same script we're not doing that but just so you know it can be modified to do that pretty easy great now HTTP request dot connect request underscore completed comma self and then this one if you were putting this in a singleton you would want to actually do self here just saying comma delete child and this is a function we're gonna make in a second comma and then in square brackets so it's an array with only one thing HTTP request and what this is gonna do is it's gonna call this new function in this script and give it a the HTTP request so that we can get rid of it and then we're going to do var req that's short for request of course next we'll do if body isn't null we'll do req equals HTTP request dot request URL comma headers comma true this is just for checking if it's secure it'll validate the certificate we want that comma method comma body and I think it's pretty obvious what this does self-explanatory else so if there is no body it's essentially we can just copy this line and paste it and then just delete body so method is the last thing passed now we'll do if req is not okay with a capital O and K we will return error great that's the fetch function next let's make the delete child function so that we can delete the HTTP request once it's finished so I'll put this up here I'll do func delete child and then we have to do a comma b comma c comma d and what these are is some parameters that get passed before the custom parameter that we've added here we don't actually need to use them but we need to have them there at the start of the function so that it can get child then all we have to do is child dot q underscore free which deletes it at the end of the frame. Now, if you don't want to get this warning here, because there is a warning, it's because we haven't used these parameters, and you can put underscores before all of the parameters here at the beginning, and then you won't get that warning. All right, so now that we've done that, let's make our callback function, which we're going to be using in a second. So, function, handle underscore response, 
in parentheses, and then these are things that you have to put here because it's gonna put them in order. So first it's result, response code, which is, of course, you know, 200, 301, 404, 503, you know, the response code. Then the headers, these are the headers that the server sent back to you. And finally, the important one, body. Then add a colon, and we're gonna do very simple things. So var response equals parse underscore JSON, because as you know, the API that I'm using as an example gives you the response as JSON here. And then you do body dot get underscore string from UTF-8. And what this does is, well, parse JSON, of course, converts it into an object, which we can read. And body dot get string from UTF-8 just converts the it converts the character encoding into a string that can be read by Godot. Then text, and this is a specific parameter of the label. So it's setting its text to be equals subscribe to space plus response zero dot commit. No commit dot author dot name which is of course going to be cuck me curb because we're going to be fetching this url so i'm going to copy this go back to our code here and inside the ready function so we want this to happen at the start of the game but of course you can put this anywhere this is just an example we're going to do fetch open parentheses and then in quotes paste the url next if you want to have any headers you can put them, the format for the headers is header, colon, value, and then header two, value two. That's how you do headers, but I'm not going to do any for this request because we don't need them. So go away. Zero, which just means get. If you wanted to do post, you could just do HTTP client dot method underscore post, of course not going to and then finally the callback in quotes handle underscore response and delete that parentheses now we can remove the pass you don't have to but just for better readability I did and that's it let's give this a shot hit run and we wait a second and look at that subscribe to cuck me curb so as you can see this works great Super useful if you want to make a simple leaderboard. You can connect this to a Google Apps script. I have a video on that, and you can build yourself a leaderboard for your game. Oh, and hey, do you see what this says right here? Those are some lovely instructions to follow. Anyway, thanks for watching, and remember to look both ways before you cross.